Wireshark is not a disaster movie set in the wide open sea. It is a free, open source, and the world's foremost network packet analyzer. And it is the de facto standard across system and network administrators. With a graphical user interface, Wireshark has the ability to listen and record traffic, as well as advanced filtering and reviewing options. So I'm going to visit a HTTP website first, then an HTTPS website. Let's go to Kali and run Wireshark. You can open a terminal screen and type Wireshark to start it. So these are the network interfaces that Wireshark is able to listen to. Let me open another terminal screen and run the ifconfig command to see the network interfaces. So as you know, ifconfig stands for Network Interface Configuration. So if we use the command without any parameter, it'll list all the interfaces available. Uh, we have ETH0 as a network interface to listen to. So now I'll turn back to Wireshark and double-click ETH0 to select it. Now Wireshark starts to listen to the Ethernet interface of Kali. And to create some traffic, I'll open a web browser and just visit an arbitrary website. And now we have enough packets to examine, so I'll click the Stop button at the upper left corner of Wireshark to stop listening to the traffic. So first, we have some DNS packets to find out the IP address of the visited site. We'll look at these kinds of packets soon, but right now let's just have a brief look. So a DNS query for the IP version 4, another DNS query for IP version 6, don't worry about the versions right now. We'll cover them soon, I promise. These DNS queries are transferred as UDP packets in transport layer. The destination port is 53. This is the IP packet with the source and the destination IP addresses. So we'll go through the layers one by one, and we'll see all these packets, datagrams, and frames in detail. So we'll keep going. This is the structure of the Ethernet frame. First, there are two DNS queries for www.hackeracademy.uk, one for the IPv4 address, and the other one is for the IPv6 address. And because the website is redirected to hackeracademy.uk, there are two more DNS requests for this address. Next, DNS packets are the DNS query responses. This response is type A. That means it's an answer for the IPv4 request. And here's the answer, the IP address of the website. Now, DNS response packet uses UDP at the transport layer, IP at the network layer, etc. Here we have a TCP handshake between Kali and the web server, We'll also see this in detail later on. A SYN packet, a SYN ACK as a reply, and an ACK packet to complete the handshake. This is an HTTP GET request. We learned the IP address of the website, and now the system is ready to receive the web page. HTTP protocol and application layer now you can see the headers and the parameters of the request. TCP protocol and transport layer, source port, destination port, flags, etc. IP protocol in network layer. Here are the source and destination addresses. And Ethernet frame in layer 2. These are the TCP packets, which will build the HTTP response. So in this example, it's the web page. In other words, the response is transferred between the web server and our system as fragmented packets in transport layer. Here's the HTTP response, 200. Okay, so the web page is received. And here's the data, which is our web page. These are the response details, response type, headers, etc. 
Here, there's additional information produced by Wireshark, which says that the HTTP response is created by reassembling five TCP segments or packets. So now I'd like to show you the difference between that and HTTPS traffic. So I'll go to the browser and visit an HTTPS page now. But before visiting the page, let's start Wireshark. Uh, here's the start button. Continue without saving. Um, okay, now we have a clean sheet. So I'll go to the browser and hit enter. Wow, lots of packets in milliseconds. So we've got plenty of packets to investigate. Just click the stop button once again. Okay, so the DNS request and the response packets first. Here is a response with an IPv4 address. Here there's a TCP three-way handshake between Kali and port 443 of Google's web server. And now a client hello TLS packet to start the TLS handshake again between Kali and Google's server. Now to get rid of the other traffic records, I'd like to filter the results by the IP address of the Google server. Now, while the mouse pointer is on the server IP address, right click and go to apply as filter and select the selected option. So as you can see here in the filter bar, the IP address is assigned as the destination IP address. Now, we only have to see the traffic where the destination is the Google server. But we'd like to see both the incoming and the outgoing traffic. So I'll change the DST part of the filter to ADDR and click the blue arrow to activate the new filter. Now we can see the traffic in both directions. Okay, so here we are at the Hello TLS message. Here are the details of the message. TLS uses TCP protocol in transport layer. The Google server replies a server hello message as the second step of the TLS handshake. Then comes the certificate and server key exchange. And the server hello done message is sent by the server. Kali sends the client key exchange. Google server sends the new session ticket and the encrypted communication starts. Here is some encrypted application data, which is meaningless for others who listen to the traffic. And as you can see here, the message is encrypted at the application layer, so you can still see the source and the destination addresses, the ports, etc. This is how an IPv4 packet is seen on Wireshark. So it's a DNS query response. The fields we mentioned are seen pretty clearly. Version is four. Header length is five words, which means no options field. Total length is 96 bytes. MF and DF flags are not set. And you can see the source and the destination addresses and all the rest. So have a look at what you see here. There are a lot of packets that Wireshark captures in seconds. There are some requests and responses for them, broadcasts and their replies and et cetera, et cetera. There is an easier way to follow a stream, although this is very entertaining. The stream is a collection of packets that form a network conversation from the beginning to the end, just like your favorite story. So I'm in Kali now. And I captured the traffic uh, just for a little bit. And while I was capturing, I visited a website to create some HTTP traffic. And here are the results. DNS packets, TCP packets, HTT packets, etc. So I'll select an HTTP packet, and it's the GET request. Right-click, go to Follow on the submenu, and here you see the TCP stream and the HTTP stream options are both enabled. So that means we can follow either the TCP stream or the HTTP stream. So let's click HTTP stream. Now the client packets are red and the server packets are blue. The get request by Kali, 200 OK response by OWASP, BWA. Now this is a return page in HTML format. 
So you can scroll down and we'll see some of the other requests and the responses in the same stream. And perhaps you're beginning to see that when you click on a link in a website or visit a website by typing its URL, there might be several consecutive requests and responses that you don't even realize. But in actuality, you don't need to know them as the end user, but we're not your typical end users now, are we? So let's keep going. From the combo box at the left-hand side of the bottom of the stream window, you can filter the conversation from one side to another or vice versa. So at the right-hand side, right, there is another combo box where you can select the output format. Now when you close the stream window and go back to the main window of Wireshark, you can see that the stream filter is applied right here. So I'll remove the filter by clicking this cross icon. Now I see the entire captured traffic again. That is why filters exist. So in typical traffic capturing on a network interface, there are a lot of packets received from and delivered to all over the network and well, the internet as well. So let's see how we can take a picture of that network. Let's go to Kali and start Wireshark. You can start Wireshark from the Applications menu or open a terminal window and type Wireshark to start the app. Don't worry about the ampersand and the end of the command. Putting an ampersand at the end of a command causes the shell to run the process in the background. It's sort of multitasking. You can have many processes running, but only one in the foreground at any given point. The process in the foreground is the process that appears to have locked up the terminal. Whatever. Uh, the first message is because we are a super user on Kali. No worries. Okay. The welcome page of Wireshark asks which interface we would like to listen to first. So let's have a look at the interfaces of our system. To look at the interfaces and to remember the IP address of Kali, open a terminal and type if config. There are two result sets of the ifconfig command, eth0 and lo. eth0 is the first Ethernet interface. Additional Ethernet interfaces would be named eth1, eth2, etc. Here we have only one. Now lo is the loopback interface. This is a special network interface that the system uses to communicate with itself. eth0 is the interface that we're interested in at the moment. Double-click to open the ETH0 on the main page of Wireshark to start capturing the packets passing through our Ethernet interface. Now, to speed it up, let's create some network traffic. Open one of my virtual machines, OWASP BWA, and ping Kali. To stop ping command, press Ctrl-C, if config, to learn the IP address of the machine. Now I go to another VM. Metasploit and ping the last VM first. And then ping Kali. Here we have a lot of ICMP and ARP traffic at the moment. So let's generate some traffic. I open the browser in Kali and visit the website served by the OWASP BWA machine. And even more traffic. I visit nhs.uk, my favorite website. Okay, that's enough. Let's turn back to Wireshark. As you see, we have a lot of packets captured, and new packets arrive every second. ARP packets, TCP packets, TLS packets for HTTPS traffic, etc. Here we don't investigate the packets in detail. We want to learn about the systems which are interacting with us. So go to Statistics menu and select Conversations. There are five tabs in the Conversation window by default. And we're on the IPv4 tab at the moment. 
Here there are IP packets grouped by address A and address B. In each line, we see how many packets sent up to now, total size of the packets in bytes, number in size of packets from A to B and from B to A, etc. There is traffic between 8.8.8.8 and my colleague. Now I know that 8.8.8.8 is the IP address of Google DNS, so I must have set the Google DNS as the DNS of my colleague. You know, I'd like to look at the network config. And yes, my DNS address is 8.8.8.8. In the Ethernet tab, we can see the MAC addresses of the systems. The addresses full of Fs mean that the packet is broadcasted. ARP requests are the examples for these kind of packets. In the TCP tab, we can see TCP packets grouped by the addresses and this time by ports as well. Because a system may have different interactions with any other system. For example, Kali may have HTTP traffic through port 80, and at the same time, it may have an SSH connection through 22 as well. Same as TCP. Packets are grouped by IPs and ports in the UDP tab. Here we have learned a lot of live systems, IP addresses, and MAC addresses just listening to the traffic go through our network interface. If you'd like to investigate the traffic between the two machines, Select the line, right-click. If you choose Apply as Filter from the menu, only these kinds of packets will be seen in Wireshark. I'll choose Find at this time. As you see, Automatic Query String is prepared. I can navigate between the packets by clicking the Find button. Go back to the Conversation window. At the bottom right, there is a Conversation Types button. When you click on it, a lot of different protocols are listed. These selected five are the default selected protocols. You can add any protocol from the list. When you select one of them, a new tab is added to the Conversation window. 